Benjamin Franklin, the Gulf War, and Michelle Obama are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is January 17th, 2023. It is the 17th day of the year. There are 348 days left. It's the third Tuesday in the third week and the 28th day of winter. You got 62 days left until spring. Today is National Benjamin Franklin Day, and it's also your deep dive. Benjamin Franklin Day is celebrated on January 17th every single year. This day pays tribute to one of the greatest founding fathers of the U.S. on the anniversary of his birth. For those of you who did not know how big a deal this guy was, we put him on the $100 bill and he's not even a president. That's why people call $100 bills Benjamins. The number of careers, hats, whatever you want to say that Benjamin Franklin wore is mind-blowing. He was an inventor, an author, a printer, a politician, a musician, a diplomat, and a scientist. That's just a few of them. He had other things. The origins of Ben Franklin Day are kind of unknown. They're not really sure when it started, but it's worthwhile to deep dive straight into the man's life and understand why the guy deserves his own day. Here's some of the things Benjamin Franklin's known for. In science, Benjamin Franklin made many contributions to the studies in the field of electricity, with his most notable one being the invention of the lightning rod in 1752. He also coined the common term related to electronics, such as battery, charge, conductor, and electrify. In 1740, his scientific pamphlets helped found the American Philosophical Society, the first of its kind in the colonies. He also invented the bifocals and the Franklin stove. When it comes to education, in 1731, Franklin founded the first subscription library. Yeah, it was the Library Company of Philadelphia. And then in 1741, he did another one of his pamphlets, and he talked about how the youth of Pennsylvania needed to be educated. This resulted in the founding of the modern-day University of Pennsylvania, which is still one of the top schools in the country. When you look at his civics, in 1757, he began to serve as the representative for Pennsylvania. And by the 1770s, he also became the first American ambassador to France. He was also part of the Committee of Five, who were responsible for drafting and signing the Declaration of Independence. And one other thing he did, he was the very first Postmaster General of the United States. His face was put on the first postage stamp after his death. Not bad for a man that dropped out of school. 1773, Captain James Cook leads the first expedition to sail south to the Antarctic Circle. 1781, the American Revolutionary War, the Battle of Cowpens. Continental troops under Brigadier General Daniel Morgan defeat British forces under Lieutenant Colonel Tarlington at the battle in South Carolina. 1920, alcohol prohibition begins in the United States as the Volstead Act goes into effect. We were talking about what a disaster that was the other day. 19 1961, U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower delivers his televised farewell address to the nation three days before leaving office, in which he warns against the accumulation of power by the military-industrial complex, as well as the dangers of massive spending, especially deficit spending. This is a big thing that I don't think a lot of people understand, and I've talked about it a bunch of times on this channel. If you don't know, Dwight D. Eisenhower was a general during World War II. He knew how the military worked. He knew how the military-industrial complex work and he warned us that was his last thing and exactly what he warned us about happened the military industrial complex they control a lot of politicians a lot of times they'll bring up the fact that whenever you want to cut spending on the military now i was in the military and i know this at least from a very low level point of view i was definitely not a general colonel or anything like that i just saw the waste and that's what a lot of our money goes to. We're given a lot of garbage when I was in that we never used, that was not needed. We had different vehicles and anti-tank weapons that they just poured billions into that were useless. It's just corruption and waste. One thing that I always go back to is during the Gulf War, a lot of soldiers had to go through this company called Halliburton to have their laundry done. Well, it took too long. It cost them money and it was never done well. They said it was always still dirty and just it wasn't a good job. So a lot of soldiers started doing their own laundry in the shower areas. Halliburton complained because this was a widespread problem and they had a contract where they were supposed to get $50 for a bag of laundry. So they forced all the soldiers to turn in at least one bag of laundry every single week. 1991, the Gulf War. Operation Desert Storm begins early in the morning as aircraft strike positions across Iraq. It is also the first major combat sortie for the F-117, which is known as the Stealth Fighter. 
or Nighthawk. Nobody knows it's called a Nighthawk, though. Everyone called it the Stealth Fighter. 1998, the Clinton-Lewinsky scandal. Matt Drudge breaks the story of Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky's affair on his Drudge Report website. 2016, President Barack Obama announces the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. This was basically a deal with Iran on nuclear weapons and things like that. Movies released on January 17th, 1939, Gone with the Wind. Everybody knows about Gone with the Wind. Not as many people have seen Gone with the Wind. Most people just know the name and they know it's this classic movie. And it is. It's an outstanding movie, especially for the day. It is an eight-time Oscar-winning film about an epic romance during the Civil War and the Reconstruction in the American South. The film retained the record for over a quarter of a century of being the highest grossing film in history. The film has been regarded as being one of the greatest films of all time. I would encourage everyone to see it. It's a great story. Don't look for any special effects or anything like that. Great acting, great story. Born on January 17, 1964, Michelle Obama, former first lady of the United States who married Barack Obama, the 44th president of the United States. She took the leading role in Let's Move initiative, which was an attempt to fight against childhood obesity and has been a strong advocate for the rights of veterans and the LGBT community. Before she became the first lady, she was the salutatorian of her high school. If you don't know what that means, that's a student who ranks second highest in a graduating class and delivers the salutatory speech. You know, second place to the valedictorian. She went on to study at Princeton and Harvard Law School. She also worked at the Sidley Austin Law Firm. Died on January 17th, 1893, Rutherford B. Hayes, the 19th President of the United States. He ended the Reconstruction and initiated the beginnings of the Civil Service Reform. He opened several law offices in Columbus, Ohio and in Cincinnati. His presidential election was one of the most closely contested in history and resulted in the Compromise of 1877 in which the Democrats basically gave him the election. He, in return, agreed to end all federal army intervention in Southern politics thus ending Reconstruction once and for all. Rutherford B. Hayes died of complications of a heart attack at his home on January 17, 1893. He was 70 years old. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.